Hello mga kapatid! O EG na! It's Tuesday once again and we'd like to welcome you brothers and sisters to our online ilim gathering. Ako po si Michael at ito po aking sister wife na si Rexan. Grabe no, January 11 na wow. ang bilis ng araw. 1-11-22! Pero kami po and I'm sure all of us are still mm-hmm. full of thanksgiving for the year that has passed. Amen. Hindi madaling madali para sa lahat. Pero I'm sure that we felt the presence of God closer than ever. Diba? Amen. Amen. I think I remember the prayer of Azaria. Yes. I think it's good to reflect on this prayer in the book of Daniel chapter 3 and the need to thank God in the midst of hardship. Always dapat. Tama. Sige. So with hearts full of praise and thanksgiving, let us now come together and worship the Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen! Amen.
Let us pray. You are amazing, God. We thank you because you are good and merciful. We follow you, we fear you, and we seek your face. We come to you with contrite heart and humble spirit, asking that you receive us once again in your love. Deliver us in accord with your wonders and bring glory to your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. We're very excited, brothers and sisters, because tonight we are so privileged and blessed because we will be hearing God's message, not just for tonight, but for the whole year. And this will be shared with us by the presiding elder of Ilium Communities, full-time servant of the Lord, Brother Willie Nakar. Good evening to all of you. As we begin this new year 2022, I would like to share with you the messages Sister Luli and I received for Irim communities. It has been a tradition in Irim that at the beginning of the year, we asked the Lord for a message for the new year. We start with a prayer, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Then open the Bible to seek a message. Every year, I, together with my wife, Sister Luli, as presiding elder and keeper of the vision, respectively, ask the Lord for a message for healing communities. We believe that these messages are prophetic and serve as messages of hope for all of us. Let me now share with you these messages. From the Old Testament, I was led to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6 to 21, the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, bringing punishment for the parents' wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but showing love down to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my compartments. You shall not invoke the name of the Lord your God in vain. Observe the Sabbath day. Keep it holy as the Lord your God commands you. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life, that you may prosper in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear dishonest witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not desire your neighbor's house or field, his male or female slave his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I would like to highlight verses 9 to 10. The Lord says that he brings punishment upon the wicked, but he shows love down to the thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. This is a beautiful and wonderful promise to all of us brothers and sisters. To those of us who love God and keep His commandments, He promises to show love to us, our families, our children, or grandchildren, even to the thousandth generation. Let us hold on to God's promise of love, faithfulness, and blessing for us this year. That is the first message. The second message is from the New Testament. 
Justice and Luligat, Acts 27, verses 6 to 26. It tells of the incident when Paul was shipwrecked and was saved. There, the centurion found an Alexandrian ship that was sailing to Italy and put us on board. For many days, we made little headway, arriving at Senators only with difficulty, and because the wind did not permit us to continue our course. We failed for the sheltered side of Crete of Salboli. Much time had now passed, and sailing had become hazardous. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that this voyage will result in severe and damage and heavy loss, not only to the cargo and the ship, but also to our lives. The centurion, however, paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. Since the harbor was unfavorably situated for spending the winter, the majority planned to put out to sea from there in the hope of reaching Phoenix, there to spend the winter. South wind blew gently, and thinking they had attained their objective, they weighed anchor and sailed along. Before long, an offshore wind of hurricane force, called a northeaster, struck. Since the ship was caught up in it and could not head into the wind, we gave way and let ourselves be driven. Because of their fear that they would run aground on the shoal of Sirtis, they lowered the drift anchor and were carried along in this way. We were being pounded by the storm so violently that the next day they jettisoned some cargo. And on the third day, with their own hands, they threw even the ship's tackle overboard. Neither the sun nor the stars were visible for many days, and though small storm raged. Finally, all hope of our surviving was taken away. Paul stood among them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice and that have set sail from Crete, and you would have avoided this disastrous loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage. Not one of you will be lost, only the ship, for last night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood by me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You are destined to stand before Caesar. And behold, for your sake, God has granted safety to all who are sailing with you. Therefore, keep up your courage, men. I trust in God that it will be turned out as I have been told. Although the passengers did not heed Paul's warning, because of Paul, all who sailed with him reached the island. Today, all of us, the whole world in fact, are going through a catastrophic storm or shipwreck, so to speak because of the global pandemic. Our lives have been overturned. Many are sick and suffering. And yet, the Lord gives us a promise <laughs> and a hope that we will experience God's saving help 
the Lord tells us in the might, keep up your courage, not one of you will be lost. <laughs> Do not be afraid, keep up your courage, it will turn out as God has foretold. Acts 27 verses 22 to 25. Sinasabi sa atin ng Panginoon, lakasan ninyo ang inyong loob. Huwag kayong matakot. Matutupad ang aking pangako sa inyo. And in the ultimate sense, we will all reach our final destination to be with the Lord when He comes. What beautiful promises the Lord gives us for 2022. To summarize, number one, He will show love to the thousand generation for those who love and obey Him. Number two, keep up your courage. It will turn out as God has foretold. May the Lord bless us with His amazing love and fill us with enduring hope that will carry us all to the finish line. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Brother Willie, for seeking God's message for the community and for sharing it with all of us. We will take this to heart and by God's grace, live according to His most holy and perfect will. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Healing Community's vision is to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. If you want to be part of this work of evangelization, please give your tithes and love offerings to the following accounts. We pray for those who gave their tithes and love offerings. May the Lord bless you a hundredfold for your generosity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Pray to our Lady of Elam, O oh dear Mary, Lady of Elam, sweet and pure, pray that your Son Jesus will, to innocence and holiness, restore the hearts and minds of long lost souls. Pray that the seed of glad tidings sown in our hearts will stir us to great hope, faith, and love. Pray for the vision and intentions of community and of the church that with the Lord's watchful care and generous provisions, they shall all be. Pray that a polluted world and all institutions will, from a powerful outpouring of the latter rain, experience the blessings of fresh living water, a renewal of the spirit and healing of our land and of all nations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the Missions Prayer Lord, I make myself available for the ministry of missionary evangelization. On my knees or in the mission field, within our borders or on foreign soil, for a single soul or for the multitudes. Empower me for abundant soul winning. By your Spirit, make me an instrument of your love and mercy, a witness bold and unashamed, an inspiring bearer of the good news. Send us the laborers, technology, and resources to reach the world. Help us break barriers overcome obstacles and penetrate new territories that all the peoples of the earth may know that you are God and there is no other. 
and to all those we reach, Lord, raise them up to become your true disciples. Here I am, Lord, send me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oracio Imperata, Merciful and Compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the, the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, and protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Luis, pray for us. San Pedro Calugsod, pray for us. Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves to you in this time, time of hope and gladness joy and reassurance knowing that there is nothing impossible for you and that you are the God who keeps his promises. You are the Lord of glory. You are the hope of us all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for joining OEG, brothers and sisters. See you again next week. Stay safe and God bless. Bye!
Yeah.